You go. Hey, Claudio, it's so nice to see you again. Hey, Billy. How you doing? I keep, good, good. I keep on running into you every few weeks, it seems. Right, right. Even though you're uh, pretty far away. You're in Romania, right? Absolutely. We're in Romania. It's uh, 8.30 p.m., close to 8.30. Um, and uh, very excited for this. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, oh, thanks so much for... Yeah, thanks so much for coming. I know it's late for you. So, um, yeah, welcome, Claudu. Um, so, Claudu is the founder of uh, a new uh, Shopify or e commerce SaaS tool called VideoWise. And I'll let him explain more about what that they do, but they do really cool stuff. And he's been in the space for, I think, like 10 or 15 years now, building a lot of cool tools. Been pretty successful there. And so, Claudio is going to tell you a little bit about video wise, but also um, about shoppable video, what that is, and how it can increase engagement and rev and add another revenue stream to your company. Thank you, Billy. Yeah, I'm actually not going to make this a product pitch. Uh, I know people don't really like product pitches, so I'm going to make this super educational with a lot of practical uh, data driven advice. So let me just share my screen. What video wise is, what we do is we are a Shopify solution. Uh, that truly helps merch, uh, merchants sell more with video. Um, we use shoppable videos uh, to help them unlock additional revenue, boost the engagement, and help with SEO ranking. Um, as Billy just introduced me, I'm the founder of VideoWise. I come from a product design background. VideoWise, we just launched in April, but we are backed up by some amazing investors from uh, high-profile companies, and we are also YouTube's largest compliant partner on Shopify. But enough about me. This is what I intend to teach the audience is uh, what are the benefits of video UGC on Shopify? Uh, how to properly use video? A lot of people don't know how to actually use video on Shopify in the right way where it loads fast and it engages with the audience. How to actually extend the lifetime of TikTok, Instagram, YouTube videos. What are the best places to use videos? What type of videos to use and so forth? All of this data has been collected over the summer by, by our team. Uh, we actually tested it on more than 200 stores uh, to, from April, April until October. And um, let's get into it. I promise this is the only slide with a meme on it. Um, so uh, why use video on your Shopify store? Just some basic data that uh, thinkgoogle.com has posted on their, on their data-driven blog, which is that 50% of the shoppers leave the product page mid-purchasing decision to go ahead and make their own research on YouTube and watch videos about the product because they're simply not getting enough information about that product uh, and they just want to see how the product feels. And uh, obviously when that happens, when shoppers leave the product page, conversion rate drops significantly. So that's one of the main reasons why you should be adding and you should be using videos on your Shopify store, especially on the product pages. Now, in terms of benefits, uh, social proof is a no brainer. It'll definitely increase social proof for your product. Um, Product presentation, again, nothing presents a product better than a video, maybe a 360 video, and that could be uh, very helpful as well. But sometimes photography doesn't do the product just, so video helps a lot. It also helps with conversion. Shoppers from, from our analytics, shoppers that watch video have a higher chance of conversion of up to 20% after the video has watched or while watching the video. Boosting the SEO, I think it's super important for everyone because you're just going to end up keeping shoppers on your pages, especially on your product pages, instead of them leaving. What this means is it's going to increase engagement. It's going to increase the session time uh, of your pages by actually 5x. That's what we've realized. People end up spending, on average, five times more time on those, uh, on those product pages that have video compared to product pages that don't have video. And I think overall video, especially today, and you know, we're, we're uh, ending 2021, it just offers a much better shopping experience. And validation comes from large platforms such as TikTok, such as Instagram, that are including shoppable videos within their video platforms because they know it converts. So here are some, some best practices. This is something that I've included, just some examples of like, do this, don't do this. Um, and I'm really sorry for calling out Fenty Beauty. I think they have an amazing brand. This is Rihanna's brand. But and, but I just wanted to, to show this brand because it's super popular. They invest a lot in video. But when it comes out, when it comes to using video on their own website, they don't do a really good job at it. So here are some really um, practical examples of how not to use video on your site. Uh, so first of all, when you're opening video, do not open videos in a small pop-up window. I'm showing the experience on mobile because we all know that mobile, uh, 
you know, usually comes first and everyone has a ratio of 70, 30 in terms of uh, mobile visitors and mobile shoppers on their stores. So if you're, if you're opening up a video, don't open it in a really small pop-up and that, you know, user has to click play again and the entire video is super tiny. Try to open videos in a full screen mode in a super immersive uh, video experience. It just makes a big, big difference. Very relevant to this is to try to avoid landscape landscape videos. Uh, if you are um, if um, if your audience is mostly coming from mobile, they're just not going to have the same experience as if you're using vertical videos. This is more like a recommendation. It doesn't mean that landscape videos are not going to convert. They're definitely going to work, but I highly recommend if you know your audience is like 80, 90% coming from mobile, use portrait style videos that'll fill up your entire screen and just seem familiar from a user experience point of view to your audience. They're already seeing these types of videos on TikTok. They're seeing them on Instagram. They know how to interact with them swiping up and down. I highly recommend you do the same when it comes to a video player on your store. Another practical example is that I see a lot of stores doing is they end up including some sort of a thumbnail or a button, watch the video, you click on it and it opens up a new tab leading to YouTube or to Vimeo to just a third party website. Please do not do this. You're just gonna drive people away from your website. Once they get onto YouTube, they're gonna get distracted by recommended videos by, you know how it is. You, you usually end up procrastinating once you end up on YouTube. It's a great platform uh, to spend your time like that. What I recommend is open videos always on your site. Open them in a pop-up, open them um, as a full screen experience. They just keep people on your site. One of our goals is to always make sure that people don't, like shoppers don't leave the product pages um, when they're trying to watch video. Another suggestion that really improves conversion is the thumbnails. This might seem like a simple thing, but a lot of people get it uh, very wrong. Uh, YouTube has figured this out that thumbnails actually drive conversion first for videos. Uh, and there's a whole philosophy about how you should design your thumbnails on YouTube. I know Mr. Beast, a popular YouTuber, he just nailed it on, on like what rules to follow. So even Netflix is using this. If you, if you look at Netflix carefully, all of their thumbnails, they're not showing movie posters. Those movie posters won't sell. They're showing either a close up, a face, a reaction, just something very interesting inside that thumbnail that'll make you click it. So, this is my recommendation for all Shopify store owners do not use dull thumbnails or do not use the first frame of your video when you place video on your store. Try to design custom thumbnails. If you want to even level it up, add some text on top of it that just better explains what. The, uh, the shopper should expect when they watch that video. Those thumbnails are the, you, the first barrier towards increasing engagement and driving video watches for that, for that video. Now, I have a list of, of multiple recommendations over here. They're sort of obvious and you might think like, oh, everything you just told us are, is pretty obvious, but yeah, it might seem obvious, but people are just not following it. They're just, they're just not applying these rules. So the first one is don't use 4K resolution videos. Again, you're you're not a cinema. You're not trying to put people, you know, to walk through a movie theater. You're just trying to convey a message here to to answer a question that a shopper might have about your product uh, or to inspire more social proof. Our recommendation, what we see convert best, is like 720p video. That usually works really well and uh, it loads extremely fast. In terms of uh, the video positioning. A lot of stores actually put their videos inside the product box on the left side of the product page. And it's usually on the sixth, seventh, eighth position uh, in that product photo carousel. You would be surprised how low the click rate is for people to actually get to those videos. What we see works best is actually creating a dedicated area to place your videos on your product pages, and not just on product pages, but on homepage on other pages as well. And I'm going to show some examples of that. Length, the length of the video is super important. There's no point in putting 20, 30 minute videos on your store because shoppers are not going to end up watching it. We've tested it on more than 10 million shoppers. The average watch time is about three minutes and 40 seconds per shopper with a watch rate of, of 1.8x 1 1 per shopper. I mean, what this means is like shoppers usually watch about two, maybe sometimes three videos, and they watch about three, four minutes of those videos. Uh, so do not, you know, um, use really lengthy videos, keep it short, keep it concise, always to the point. 
Another recommendation that is not listed here is, and you know, we're doing it video wise, is set a custom start time. You can even do that with regular embedded YouTube videos because uh, you can just start the video from a certain time when you copy from YouTube. We do it in, in an even easier way in our application. For example, we have an end time and a start time. But just start the video straight to the action, skip the intro, skip the sponsorships from, from any videos that you might have from, from TikTok or anything. Just take people straight to the action. And then another big uh, mistake that people do is usually just embedding like a streaming video on, on their page or something that I re highly recommend, uh, I highly recommend that they avoid doing is putting autoplay, uh, autoplayable videos on their pages. I know that this might add to the overall feel and to the overall brand um, and the look of the website. It sometimes helps. And if, you're, if your page is really light, then sure, use it. But if you have a lot of video content and you're using it on, I don't know, 100 pages, you're using it like multiple types of videos on the page uh, of how-to videos or different, di just different types of videos, uh, Shopify Plus recommends light, L-I-T, uh, video embedding, which is pretty much lazy loading a thumbnail that launches the actual video player. So on the initial page load, you're not loading a video. You're not, uh, I don't know, uh, trying to contact the CDN server for uh, for that video. You're pretty much just loading a compressed JPEG thumbnail with a CSS maybe play button on it. Or sometimes I've seen stores being even more practical if they don't have any developer help, just included that play button inside the image and you know made it like a small hack. Uh, so images load faster than videos. Try to load thumbnails first and the thumbnail will launch the actual video player. So these are just some quick uh, takeaways that you can really do fast to, to improve video. The other thing is a lot of people don't know that they can extend the lifetime of their TikTok, their Instagram, their YouTube videos. Most of the successful brands that we work with, they have a ton of video content and the, the lifetime and the process of this IGC or UGC video content is always the same. They produce it, either they collect it, they hire influencers, they produce it with like video production companies. That's the first step. Great. You distribute it, post it on social media, run ads, and then you get traction and you convert them. But what if I told you that there's an extra step that you can do and so few companies actually do it, which is just put it on your site in a way that it actually makes sense. And once you put it, it's such a simple value proposition. People are going to engage with it if it's informative and it's going to sell. It's, you're just leaving money on the table if you're not using your video content to sell because the conversion rate, while, while for shoppers that watch video, is much higher than shoppers that don't watch video. So again, we do have conversion rates of up to 20% inside the video player when, they, when they're watching video, uh, but our average is usually about 14, 16%. That's usually what stores are getting when they're using video-wise. So my strong advice is, Leverage all of those Instagram stories that expire after 24 hours, and then you just end end up putting them in collections that nobody's actually gonna watch, you know, in time. They're not gonna generate a lot of clicks. And you end up paying influencers so much money to produce that content, and you just use it for maybe a campaign or something like that. Don't do that. Please leverage those videos, put them on your website, and there, you're just going to make the, the video content, the existing video content that you already have, just put it to work and make it work passively for you. Why use shoppable videos? I'm going to share some average stats from video-wise. So what we're noticing is for every uh, quarter million visitors, for 250,000 visitors, we're seeing about 30,000 videos watched. Again, on an, on an average of 1.8 videos per shopper. This is crazy. It adds more than 2,000 hours of time on site. Like it just adds so much time on site. Your entire product page is just becoming, they're consuming this content on your product page, on your website, instead of leaving it and going to other places. The average watch time is about three minutes uh, and I, I think 22 seconds or 30 seconds, something like that. And for every 250K visitors, you're just adding revenue. It won't be revolutionary. It's gonna be something like 20K. We noticed on a million visitors, it adds about $80,000. But this is direct revenue. This is coming directly from the video player. The thing is, videos actually drive revenue even after they play. So we, we were looking at the conversion rate of shoppers after watching video, and the conversion rate maintains. They might close the video, maybe look a bit on the page again and purchase, and they still purchase at a higher conversion rate than uh, if they were not to have any videos on those screens. Now, in terms of best places, where to put videos on your store. I'm gonna share some practical uh, examples from our customer success team. 
these places have been tested. We've been, I, I come from product design background. I'm usually very data driven. Uh, all of my decisions, all of my product iterations are based on hardcore data. So we always test positions and we're very curious, how do people react if you're gonna put a video there? Are they actually gonna watch it? How much time are they gonna spend watching it? And one of the highest conversion uh, areas is right underneath the add to cart button. A lot of the, we know how important it is not to push your add to cart button below the fold. Uh, so definitely don't try to place video in a crazy in a crazy position. But if you're gonna place it above that description, those two, three, four paragraphs uh, of description text that rarely people sometimes read, but they're more likely to watch a video, especially if you have an engaging thumbnail with a great headline that just shows showcases the product. What we've noticed is this usually works great for product presentation, and it just gets more clicks than actually putting the video inside the product box on the sixth, seven, eighth position. The next, the next day, uh, the next position on the page is actually to add it above your text reviews area. All you guys have text reviews. That's great. You have hundreds of text reviews. Nobody's going to read it. They're just going to look like, okay, this product has 500 reviews of 4.9 stars. Great. But what if you can actually add social proof that makes sense, that comes from influencers, that's come from, that comes from videos that you've collected from your users? It just makes the entire social proof experience better. So I'm not saying ditch your text reviews and photo reviews. Keep them, but add video in a way that it stands out and it makes sense for your customers to digest it. We also recommend putting videos on other pages. You can make shoppable videos and link them to products from your homepage, from the About Us page, from your how-to pages, on blog posts as well. We've seen crazy conversion uh, once we started putting shoppable videos on every blog post. It was such a good channel for distribution for the product, especially for brands that were really focused on certain products. And I highly recommend you do that as well. Don't just put your blog post in text, include video as well. Now, in, term, in terms of what, what types of video converts best, unboxing experiences were our top runner along with customer video reviews. It was about the social proof. Uh, that, was all, that always got the best engagement rate, the highest clicks. Then it was the how-to videos, then the product presentations. And in terms of engagement, video, vertical video always converted three times more than landscape simply because most of the audience was coming from mobile. Influencer videos had a bit more watch time than regular customer reviews. And it pretty much makes sense. An influencer is going to make the video look a bit better. Uh, but always try to use authentic product videos because they engage more than some sort of a commercial that just looks like a commercial. In terms of data-driven, coming back to this is always experiment with your video content. We're doing it on a constant basis. We're, we're uh, imploring our customers to like test different types of videos on their pages, look at the conversion rate and see which, the, which of those videos, which of those influencers that they work with actually get a higher engagement and continue working with them afterwards. So these are just some practical advice, like practical tips, best practices that we've collected. They come from our own experiences. This is our own data. Um, and I highly recommend everyone applying it. Everything that I just shown you, plus a ton more, you can actually do it with video wise. You don't have, you have to know any coding skills or any anything like that. Uh, we actually onboard everyone. Even if you don't have a development team, we can help you. It's honestly just copying the line of code or drag and dropping it on online store 2.0. So super simple implementation and very scalable on thousands of product pages. Just for this, for DTCX, we do have a special offer, Billy. Uh, we, are offering, we are offering everyone two months free. Uh, if they sign up and they mention that, hey, we're coming from DTCX. So uh, over the next week, we just uh, wanted to maintain the special offer for anyone that's interested. And they can find me at Claudio at videoize.com or just go to videoize.com and, and sign up from there and mention it to support that you heard about the offer from DTCX. That's... That's me. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Claudio, thanks so much. I mean, we had, to... oh, I think we lost Claudio. Well, uh, yeah, thanks, Claudio. Um, for those of you that ask questions, we'll ask Claudio to jump back in the chat and uh, respond. Cause yeah, I think there were some great questions about SEO and website speed and things like that from a few people. 